Okay. All right, Zen's got the reactions of an old man, apparently. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa, and I'm not just standing here with the glasses on, or the sunglasses on, trying to be, let me, let me just do my hair, trying to be like cool indoors. No, I've actually legitimately lost my glasses, and these are my prescription, so I'm, like, I'm, they're like pres prescription sunglasses, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so that's why I look like a complete idiot. But there's no change there, is there? All right, welcome to Overanalyze, guys. Of course, our beautiful Overwatch coaching series. And today, we're going to take a look at a Batiste and Lucio player who says they throw the match, or at least throw parts of the match through being very cocky. So we're going to have to see what they do, ladies and gentlemen. Also, as well, um, I'm not going to tell you the SR of this game because it's in the replay system. So we kind of, like, well, we can't see the rank icon down here. Also, as well, the UI, hello, Blizz, is completely broke. What is this gap? Why, why, why is this not a line? What, like, what, what is going on? Fix it. Hello. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to tell you the SR, right? So it means I'm not going to tell you the start of the email the person sent through because they actually talk about their SR. But we see if you can work it out. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give us, no, I'll give you until after the first attack and then I'll tell you what the SR is because it'll probably be very clear because there are some things you can look for that suddenly just give away SR of players and teams and stuff like that. Anyway, I believe this is a six stack, which makes it special. Also as well, I believe it is a, um, um, something. I forgot. I totally forgot what I was going to say, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> Professionalism. It is actually the best. Also, I'm not being paid by Coke, but Coke, you want you want me to advertise your drink then? I mean, right, let's take a look at team comps. Let's take a look at the team comps. Right. So the enemy team do not have a tank. <laughs> this is bad news for the enemy team. So I look above me and I'm like, well... Oh, dearie me, they've got a Zarya, they've got a D.Va. Well, they've got two tanks there, Stipe. Yeah, well, well, yeah. But the problem is they have no main tank. They've got no way of absorbing massive amounts of frontal damage, which is going to slap them as they come through the choke. So they're going to die. Unlucky. This could be a horror show for what 222 could eventually look like, where it's like, yeah, you know, we've got two tanks. And they we're like, but guys, we need a main tank. Hello, hello. Depends how Blizzard implements it, right? Anyway, they've also got a Moira. They've got a Junkrat which is good for us on Batiste. They've got a um, Reaper and a Mercy. Okay, fine. We, however, have got a much better team comp because what we have got, and this is what makes it beautiful, is we've got a main healer. We've got an off healer. It's beautiful, right? So we've got Big Bad Zen. He's got his awesome discords. He's got his damage. He's got his crucial um, transcendence defensive ultimate. We've got Batiste. Yeah, okay, he's cool. We're going to go over him in detail. Front tank, this is great. And I don't care what this is. I literally don't care what this is. I don't care what that is. This is what makes me happy. And I'm like, cool, we're going to win the game, right? So let's see what we do. Now, remember what I said about the SR of this game. The first fight's about to begin. Look where your team are defending, right? A lot of you guys in the comments now and watch this video, you know what SR, you, you just know what th this game is, right? Because it's like, at what level do players defend there? It's gold, ladies and gentlemen. This is a gold rated game, although it's fairly high gold. It's 2,448 rated. Uh, and this player, I do believe, has been in platinum, but finds it very hard to stay in platinum. And that was the whole point of the email and, and sending the clip in. It's like, Sty, I want to actually stay in platinum. Right then, so let's take a look at what's going on here with your team. This is terrible. The reason why this is terrible, it's dead simple. I've said this literally a billion times in Overanalyze. The enemy can spawn there. The enemy spawn like over here. They can fire at you from the spawn. They are invincible in the spawn. That's actually quite a good ability. So they can spam, spam, spam and just blow you away. That's not good. Also, you're, you're so... like. Your team is so far forward here that the enemy team can just rush you over and over again. And then maybe they get a pick and they can push onto you. Whereas if you defend further back, see kind of where you are here. In fact, what we'll do is we'll we'll jump this back because I believe uh, if we just jump this back. Yeah, okay. So here, this is a good, a good picture. So generally where you see teams defend um, on King's Row, standard position would be here, right? So let's just draw an Arisa barrier there. Okay, that's cool. Right on the corner there. That's That's a fine position to be standard let's say uh, although you could argue that on the high ground over here so just through this door we're standing right next to stick a barrier there that's probably the standard position but again that suffers from the enemy team can see you from their spawn but still you've got the chance of rotating around to like where you are right here then you could set one up here so there's a lot of options right also there's a further back defensive position here which is further around sort of like if we're if this is the primary defensive position this could be another one here which is further back behind the hotel and what this does is i mean and, and even if you're feeling completely crazy you could go up there but you don't generally see that but the, the reason why this position here and this position are generally favoured is because it does not give the enemy access to you from their spawn. 
So they have to come all the way around the corner to engage you here. Now, if you lose somebody and it's a bit of a rough fight, maybe we lose, like, but maybe we kill the attackers, but they kill two of our team. What actually this means is because our team are already in this area, we can still disengage here, regroup and then come back into the fight. Whereas if we're so far forward here and we lose two players, so if two players get killed, right? That's pretty bad for us because the enemy team are going to spawn faster than we're going to be able to get there. And because our team is so far forward, generally they won't disengage. And it's a major problem. And we'll just all get killed. The enemy just walk into the point. So I'm worried. I'm honestly really worried. But because we can see the team comp, I'm not worried because I know the enemy have got no primary tanks and never going to be able to push through the choke. And I don't know why players don't get that. Well, I do. I do. Because maybe Zarya wants to play Zarya. And maybe Diva wants to play Diva. All right. Okay. So... Another thing I want to talk about here, and this is your crucial most, like, this is your best ability. It's your immortality field, and it's being clever with immortality field. So one of the things we look for with immortality field is line of sight blocking terrain. So what this means is we want to deploy the drone in a place where it can't be destroyed. So here, even though I don't agree with this position, I think it's terrible for your team to just be standing here, absorbing damage and just whatever. You could deploy the drone here. It is behind the wall. It cannot physically be destroyed by the enemy team, yet we still get the immortality effect over here. That's top tier thinking with Batiste. Instead of just throwing it out like randomly here, which of course, throwing it out into the middle, it's still going to give you a return, but it would be safer if they can't access the drone and kill it. Okay, so we're standing right with our team. We're firing heals in. We're not actually taking any damage, so we're just spamming heals. I don't mind that because, well, we can see a Junkrat bomb has just flew over the top there, there which... Uh, you know, he's going to cause some splash damage and whatnot. The thing is with Junkrat and us spamming like this, we're probably going to get our ultimate really quick. And the thing... Yeah, nice regen field. The thing I don't really mind about Batiste is just spamming your ultimate because it's like a throwaway. It's like Tracer's Pulse Bomb. Look at it. It's on 59%, 65%. The only thing I don't like, though, is the way we're standing on top of our team. Like, we don't need to be there, do we? Like, we could literally be much further back, safe, at the corner of the hotel, firing our grenades into the team. If we need to get in there and use a regen field, we can walk forward and do it. We can also throw our immortality drone from that range. There's literally no point standing here because think what the enemy could do. I'm not saying they'll do this. And in fact, I don't think they will do this because it's a gold level game. But if it was a high level game, one of these players, let's say, I don't know, maybe Reaper goes, you know what, I'm going to play Widow. And then what he does is he just, he stands up here in the window and just, okay, I said a naughty word, so I had to cut it out of the video as YouTube would delete me. All right, so <laughs> he would stand up here and then just mm -hmm, shoot you in the head and kill you. That's not good, right? Because you're so exposed. So try not to be exposed, all right? All right, let's see. Okay, so we're, we're walking on the team again. Spamming heals in. It's fine. I don't mind using the regen field there. We're shooting the enemy team. Remember as well, you can fire as you heal. So you get a bit of extra value. So as you're firing, you can heal as well, which, okay, you're not going to want to aim at the enemy to heal them, but like, if you're firing through a fight, it might hit your team and, you know, but generally always prioritize healing, don't prioritize damage unless you've got absolutely nothing else to do. Uh, and we haven't really spoken about your passive ability yet as well, your boots, which you could use to get into nice little positions. We could jump onto the statue next to us here. Again, we know we're, f we're relatively safe because the enemy's got nothing that can really kill us. Uh, and I can't see when you press tab in the replay mode, which is slightly annoying. Be nice if there was like an indicator down here or something that went off when you did that. But um, we're safe. Nothing can kill us. So we could stand on top of there and just fire away and just do whatever. Anyway, we're using our uh, ultimate ability. I mean, I don't mind. We've won this fight anyway because we pushed them back. I don't like McCree using his ultimate there as well. If you're in a six stack and I don't like Arissa running away as well. If you're a tank player, do not run away from your healers, especially when there's no way you're going to die. Let your healers heal you and get ultimate charge. In fact, especially when your healer has just used its ultimate. Although, of course, because your ultimate is active, you will not get ultimate charge. So, But at least Zen got ultimate charge there anyway. Okay, so uh, like because he had the orb on Arissa. So, all right then. Uh, we've paused this at an interesting moment. We've got a Reaper. Let's see what you do. Yeah. Now... I like that, and I also don't like that, <laughs> because watch Reaper as he comes in. <laughs> watch him. So there's Reaper. Uh oh, our first thought is we're going to throw down the immortality field. Now, this is good and bad. What this says to me is you are in tune with dangers, right? So you're playing, you're playing. Oh, God, there's somebody. Ah, and you threw it down. I like that, because that will save you a lot of the time, right? Because... You know, maybe this player comes in and, and does try and get like a cheeky kill or something like extreme happens. Thing is, though, if you just took a deep breath before you did that, you turn around, you go, there's a Reaper. But look, there's our Reaper. I'm here. The whole team is here. 
there's no way Reaper's going to kill anybody because our Reaper's going to turn around and shoot him and he's going to get uh, ultimate... Well, not ultimate... Well, he's going to get ultimate charge, but he's going to get life regen from his passive. We're also just going to heal our Reaper. He's never going to die. Their Reaper's dead and we've still got immortality field. Now, the reason why I'm worried is because of this. Junkrat and D.Va, right? But D.Va's way off her ultimate, so we don't really care too much about her but junkrat i'd be worried about and the reason why i'd be worried about junkrat is we charged our ultimate up pretty quick that means junkrat was doing a pretty good amount of damage to our team and we're getting massive aoe healing again which is good for us but also good for junkrat because he's charging his ultimate and the way they could break your comp here is if junkrat froze his riptide because look at what we've got available here we have no transcendence because zen hasn't been able to do anything so how do we stop it well we stop it with immortality field now, Immortality Field's got quite a big cooldown. So what we don't want to do is use that at a, at a bad time when we know the enemy are going to use an ultimate, which we need that to deflect against because we know Zen doesn't have his ultimate. And this goes back to a higher level type of thinking where if you're a support player, you really need to think about what ultimates the enemy have got, what you can do to counter them, what ultimates your fellow support players have got on your team, and then really work out what you need available at any given moment. Because if that Junkrat comes... Because I'm, I'm, I know you guys are probably watching this now, like, well, Stai, he's on 75%, this Junkrat. He is, right? But this 75% can be 100% in literally, like, two seconds, right? Because all he needs to do is just get a few clutch bombs and bang, he's got it, and then he's throwing it in. So watch what happens here, right? Let's see how fast he charges his ult. So we've used our immortality field, right? You can see the cooldown there. It's you know it's a long cooldown. We've still got 14 seconds left on it. Junkrat is on 86%, 87%. Just watch them. We're on like eight seconds. Aris has gone in with Bongo. Okay. Now you'll notice, yeah, all right. So we've just completely killed the enemy team there. That's fine. Um, but where's Junkrat? All right, so Junkrat's got his ultimate now. Now, of course, Junkrat probably isn't going to use his ultimate now because his whole team's dead. It would be completely pointless to do it. But can you see this, the idea of sync, the, the idea of like syncing abilities with enemy abilities or especially enemy ultimates to make sure we can counter what they're doing? And you absolutely had to sync your ability. Now, luckily, it is synced, right? Just about because this guy took too long to charge. So this gave you the chance to get this back after using it, wasting it on the Reaper to then, well... Yeah. The only thing I'm going to say as well, which I didn't kind of pick up on uh, as, as you threw it down, maybe you thought Reaper had his ultimate, in which case, obviously, it was might have been the right play to drop it down. But why would you have thought Reaper had his ultimate when at no point during the, the first couple of pushes, Reaper ever got anywhere near us? He just died. So, yeah. All right. So, so fire in the hole. I mean, like, why? Why, Junkrat, would you do that? Oh, oh, why would he do that? All right, you did the right thing, but McCree actually killed it. All right, so cool. We're almost nearly up to another ultimate again. We're spamming heals again. But again, like, like I don't like this positioning. This positioning is, you're, you're way exposed, right? I know the enemy team are not really posing much of a threat right now, but we can't, we cannot be just standing here like this. You've got to push back. You've got to, well, I guess it's, if you look at me on the camera, it's like, that way. We need to go that way. Yeah, and be nice and safe. There's, there's no need to be here. And McCree's doing the same thing as well. Because let... Look, right. We, we talk about this a lot in over Analyze as well. What is the win condition, right? What's the win C? The win condition. Well, Diva Bomb could be bad for us, yeah? Reaper Ult could be bad for us. Grav and Diva Bomb, bad for us. Riptire, bad for us. We don't really care about Coalescence too much. We don't really care about... Mercy's all too much, which they seem to be using, I believe, right now. Um, because, yeah. But we'll see what happens, right? Let's see what happens. Because what we care about is stopping these enemy ultimates. Okay, our Reaper was terrible there. If he's your friend and you play with him a six stack, pull him to one side and go, Hi! What the hell were you doing, Reaper? <laughs> all right, cool. Right, remember that isn't a shield in mortality field. It might look blue and it might look like, oh, it's a barrier I can stand behind, but it definitely isn't. You're going to take damage for it. All right, that's it. Play with your shield. Back up a bit. We don't. We still don't really need to be here. We can just back up a bit. Also, we don't need to heal when there's no damage being taken. But like I said, I don't mind pre-healing. That's fine. Why? Why do we use immortality field there? 
I'm, I was waiting for it, right? I was actually waiting for it. Like, why did we use immortality field there? I, I think players get into this, like, rhythm of, like, using abilities, like, bang, 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 I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm pressing uh, regen field, boom, 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 now I'm going to throw out immortality. But why? Like, look at the enemy team. They've got a Reaper ultimate ready to go. If this Reaper ports into us and pops that, who's going to stop it? Well, we've got Zen who can stop it, but we could have stopped it with an ability, maybe. Let's see what happens. So we get no value out of that immortality field whatsoever. Yeah, we... <laughs> well, I say that. We actually did get value off it there because I think we would have died and luckily we dropped back into it. Um, but we need to use our regen field to heal ourselves. So we need to back up. Okay. All right, Zen's got the reactions of an old man, apparently. <laughs> Let's go back. Ah, right. Look at the time. I can't even see the time. It's that blocky. What's, what's it on? I don't know. It's like a minute. A minute and 20 seconds or something. A minute and 30 seconds. Ah, right. Reaper. You know what? This actually is quite a good overanalyze because it's showing you the importance of enemy ultimate sync. And because the replay system shows you this, you can really, like... Well, I, I can really highlight it. So if I'm playing in this game, right, I would be thinking Reaper has his ultimate. I'm also thinking Diva. She must have a... Has Diva not had an ultimate all game? I don't know. I think that's like 70%. I have no idea what Diva's been doing. But, but anyway, I'm looking and I'm like, there must be a Reaper ultimate. And I'd be, I'd be thinking there's a Diva ultimate and a Graviton Surge. So I'm expecting in this game, this, in this fight, there's just going to be everything. It's going to be a massive disaster. So... Zen counters all three of those abilities at once if he pops Transcendence, right? But also you as well extra counter it with your Immortality Field. So there is no way we lose to these three potential ultimates the enemy have got. However, with the power of the replay tool, we can see the enemy team are so bad, all they've got available is the Reaper. Now, that's still going to be enough to kill us. And we know it does because we've just watched it happen. So... I don't know how Zen isn't thinking I need to be ready, with my finger on the, on the ultimate key, ready to blast it, because I know we're about to get smashed by some ultimate, which is going to kill us. That's the difference between gold players and, like, diamond players and above. Diamond players will start to identify that. And if you can do it earlier on in your Overwatch career, you become a better player. Because I've got a... You know what? Let's go full screen. I've got a massive pro tip for you guys here. Overwatch, for, like, supports and... and tanks and even dps to some extent you can get to a massively high level and i'm talking gm i'm not i'm not talking like oh yeah you can just about break to masters no you can actually get to gm right and stabilize there if you just read the game better and have a better overwatch brain and understand enemies might have this ultimate available if they do i'm going to do this to counter it having this logical methodical plan reading the match it makes it, you will literally just burst through the ranks it almost comes i think at like a moment where Players have this epiphany and they're like, oh my God, if I just slow down a little bit, or if I just think logically, right then, what ultimates have the enemy got? Oh, I'll just save my ability to counter that. You will win loads of games. Now, of course, when you start getting into high GM and top 500, yeah, mechanical skill plays a massive part. And, uh, you know, it, well, I would be lying if I said mechanical skill didn't play a part between like gold and GM. Of course it does. But what I'm saying is you could be hard stuck in like diamond, but actually you could easily get to high master or even low GM, if you just applied some better thinking, better crucial, critical thinking when it comes to Overwatch. Okay, so that's my rant done. Let's take a look at this and watch how it plays out. So, right, we kill their Junkrat, DMAC the Diva. We drop this down. I don't actually mind, to be honest. I'm like, whatever, I don't mind, that's fine. But Reaper is just going to come in, right, with his ultimate now. Problem is, we can't stop this because we don't have Immortality Field. But it shouldn't matter because Zen could do it. But this, again, is relying on other people. Overwatch is a team game, but... And so, just watch how long it takes for Zen to react. At that point, Zen may as well have just saved his ult because everybody's dead anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. They should take this point. They, you see, see they've, they've done what I said they would do. Although they did it in a kind of messed up way. They used Reaper. Then they threw a grav in and Zarya died. But then they threw a bomb in as well. And that should be enough. And they're using Coalescence as well. But can you see how that could be stopped with Zen being a little bit quicker? Or you just having your immortality field ready for that big push, the ultimate push. They don't win that fight. We win that fight. And we win it because we've got a massive 
five had bloody two billion IQ. When actually it's not, because Overwatch is a bloody simple game. You just get caught up in all the visual clutter. You get caught up in all of the, the hype. That was, you know what? Your McCree's actually a good player. He's killing a lot of people. All right. Why, Arissa? They the, the payload's not even around the corner. So we get minimal value off that. McCree, why? So two wasted ultimates there. Remember, Overwatch is a game of ultimates if we the Reaper behind us. All right, that was a nice immortality field. There's also a Junkrat Riptire coming in from behind. Okay, so, all right. Well, what I was saying is Overwatch is a game of ultimates. Your team wasted two there. Not great. We should get in the immortality field. We know Junkrat's still to the left. Yeah. Although you could argue your placement isn't great. We could have backed up a little bit more and dropped the shield kind of where we are. Well, not the shield. Even I'm calling it a shield now. Drop the immortality. It's not immortality for amplification matrix. We should have dropped that where we are now, kind of, to get more value. Because they're just going to push through this. Although we're still going to get value, so. Nice. Actually, I like that. You know, you do have a window of opportunity to do damage when you are standing in your immortality field. Provided nobody needs healing. I mean, remember, people still take damage in the Immortality Field. They just don't die. Okay. All right. So one of the other things we haven't really spoken about with Immortality Field is using it offensively. It's like throwing it in the enemy's face and rushing them. Now, this is a bit of a weird thing. Also, you've never really used your passive in this game. I don't think I've ever seen you crouch and charge the jump, um, which can be quite funky because you can jump up in the air, take pot shots at the enemy. Look at the enemy team comp. They have nothing. They have no hit scan that can actually damage you. So you could, in theory, jump up and down and keep shooting the enemy as they're running towards your point. You know, this is just going back to like having a plan, going back to being proactive constantly, always doing something in the game. But yeah, you could totally throw your amplification, your immortality field and rush them. <laughs> <laughs> this is like horrific. No, don't do that. That is so bad. Don't, do not do not listen to me. Do not throw. Yeah, Zen. Zen actually did it. And and your immortality field. Oh, yes. Come on. Yes, I love it. So you you actually popped your immortality field at the, at the super right time. Zen pops his ult as well. We counter him. It's cool. It's great. Uh, because, of course, you will not stop his ultimate completely with immortality field because he will destroy the drone and then start doing damage. So I love it. I like it. Finally, Zen redeems himself. All is good in the world. And just forget my plan of using Amplification Matrix. Uh, no, it's not. It's Immortality Field. Aggressively. Although I do I do like doing that myself. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> heal, Zen. Heal, heal. God damn it. See, one of the things I haven't been shouting about too much is heal. Because you are healing people. And I like it. Right, we could, right, okay, think about what we can, yeah, that's cool. I was going to say, think about what we can do. We've got Amplification Matrix, we may as well throw it away. They've got a Junkrat who's very kindly giving us loads of ult charge, so we may as well just, like, go at them with it, engage them with it. Nice! Nice! Well... The, the old flanking reaper. Oh, my days. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. See, see, I tell you what's happening here, right? The enemy team should not be getting anywhere, really. But what all that's going on is Junkrat and Reaper are just flanking your team. And, like, just doing brain-dead stuff, like rushing your team with their ults. And, and it, it, like, it, it works because your team are not really respecting them enough, right? Okay, all right. Nice, nice. We're just going to go and use our ults now. Good healing, though, on Reaper. Unlucky that we died there, though. We're going to C9. No, we might have enough. We might have enough, actually. I think we've got enough. Yeah. I don't know, actually. We're low on the point. Ooh. Yeah, Zen's using Trance. We should be okay. So all we're looking to do here is get back and just drop Amp Matrix and just start firing through it, basically. I mean, I'd have dropped Amp Matrix straight away. Like, what I would have done is dropped Amp Matrix immediately around the corner, then threw my Immortality Field and just started pumping heals in. But we had such a massive advantage, it was fine. So that was okay, right? That was that was honestly okay. 
there's just some little desync issues with realizing abilities that you've got that you should be saving, especially a mortality field, to counter enemy abilities. Also, Initiating match. what was that? <laughs> Diva killed everybody for the game and finished. Oh man, what? What is that? Oh, that is insane. Oh my god. Anyway, whatever the match had finished. So, yeah, or the round had finished. Right, let's beef this up. All right, so you're gonna play Lucio now. Um, I don't mind. Like, I t I comp's okay. I mean, I guess you're just using Lucio so you can speed in. It's fine. Like, you could have just carried on playing Bappers. It's fine. Right, the enemy team now have got a tank. Why now would they go, oh, oh, oh. D-Bat, who plays Zarya for the entire attack phase, is like, you know what, on defense, I'm going to play a tank now. Why did you not do that to begin with? Your team would have had way more stability. Holy hell. Right, anyway, they're trying to play bunker comp with a Junkrat. I mean, this could actually be bad for us. I'm not going to lie. This could be bad for us. Right, let's see. <laughs> okay, so we boost straight away out the door. We <laughs> we just sort of ignore the Junkrat trap on the ground. and Yeah. All right, now we're taking the high ground. Uh, going around the side. <laughs> we didn't really need to amp the healing there. But that's fine. Okay. We're actually, really nice rotation. So you can tell that you're playing together as a team. I like it. Super nice we got on the point. Nice boop out of the immortality field. And we just wiped the floor with the enemy team. That was nice. That was really nice. That was really nice. That was really, really nice. You see, and the funny thing is with Overwatch, like that, what just happened there, you know, you can sit there and play in much higher ranked games and that will never happen all match. And, and you're like, what's going on? It's just because people don't want to do it. It's mental. But you can see the power there of a six stack. Really like it. Super cool. All right. Junk crap. Tell your team is there, then kill him. Uh, or your team playing it safe. Okay. Apart from Zarya. You just went forward to die. All right. Cool. Whatever, Zarya. All right. What are we going to do? What are, we, what are we thinking about here, Lucio? We've almost got sound barrier. What ults have the enemy got? Well, uh, rip ties coming up, I suppose. Like, we always need to be aware of Riptire because it's just a good Junkrat map, basically, for spamming damage. Anyway, we're going super aggressive here. A bit cheeky there, to be fair. Yeah. This is okay, though, because they're using all their ultimates, right? We disengage. I like it. Uh, and they also... All right, so... I really don't get why players do this. Like, that enemy team have threw that and get it. They've, they've basically threw the next fight. There was no need for Mercy to use her ultimate there. Okay, there was a need for Bastion to pop his ult. Batiste, I don't care because he gets it every two seconds, it seems like. But hopefully they don't use Rip Tire as well. That'd be really bad. No. All right. So now we're going to go into this with pretty much five ults online. So, I mean... <laughs> well, let's see what you do. Let's see what you do. Because what you could do here is you could engage with Beat and just... Blitz the Bastion. I mean, that's probably the play here. What you just say is like, guys, you know, group up. We're just going to go in. I'm going to hit B and we're just going to rush the Bastion and kill him. Everybody else use their ultimates when they feel like it, especially Reinhardt. If he gets in, Big Earth Shatter is just going to wreck everyone. <laughs> rush the Bastion. B boost. Beautiful. <laughs> It's beautiful. So, it's beautiful, man. It's absolutely beautiful. Like, your team on attack are amazingly good. They're executing these plans beautifully. Like, absolutely beautiful. Now we've won. We just push forward. Especially you on Lucio. You just go forward and boot them. Nice grab. Win. Whoa, we're losing a lot of people. I think we win anyway. I don't think they get there. Right, cool. Love it. All right, all right. I enjoyed that game. It was cool. It was super cool that match was. Guys, I've been Solo, so this is Unit Lost. If you guys enjoyed the video, then remember you can like the video. This has been Overanalyzed, that glorious Overwatch coaching series. If you want to send a video clip for, well, in for consideration, do follow the instructions that have been on the screen. And uh, yeah, 
I think I'll leave it at that. It's been wonderful. All right, guys, catch you on the next one. Toodaloo.